Okay, so today's lesson is chapter 7.4, uh, inverse functions. And we're going to talk about what inverse functions are and um, how we find them and how we can prove that two functions are inverses. But before we get to that, let's talk about an inverse relation because a function starts off as a relation. And it's sometimes easier to see uh, an inverse relation than it is an inverse function. So here we have our original relation. <clears throat> a relation is just a mapping from one number to, a ne to the next from the input to the output, from the x to the y, from the domain to the range, however you want to say it, a mapping um, is just, a relation is just a mapping. So here we go from negative two to four, we go from negative one to three, zero to negative one, one to negative two, and two to negative six. That's our relation, our x's to our y's. Now the inverse of that is just where we flip the numbers. So if, if you see the red and the green, the y values become the x values, and the x values in red become the y values. And now instead of negative 2 being mapped to 4 in our original relation, 4 is mapped to negative 2 in our inverse relation, and so on and so forth. 3 to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, and negative 2 to 1, and negative 6 to 2. So this is an original, and this is the inverse. So the, the x and the y's, the inputs and the outputs are just flipped. Or you could even say that uh, from the original relation we go from input to output and the inverse maps the output back to the input. Um, again, a mapping is just from one number to the next. Just the relation, the mapping from one number to the next. So let's look at inverse functions and how to find them. So first of all, an inverse function is going to be defined as f, it looks like f to the negative one um, of x, but that's just f inverse of x. That's just that's just a notation. We say it as f inverse of x. So this is f inverse of x. <clears throat> so this is the notation we're going to use once we find the inverse. There are four easy steps uh, to finding an inverse, and the fir or the the first and last step are really just changing the notation. So the first step we're going to change f of x to y. And I talked about in the last video how we can do this. We can go from y equals to function notation because y is a function of x. So we're going to change f of x to y. The next step is to switch the x and the y's or flip the x and y um, numbers. Just like we did in the relation, we're going to flip the variables in the equation. Next, we're going to solve for y, and we're going to get a function in the form of y equals mx plus b. Or depending on what, what uh, you're going for, you could get it in vertex form or standard form, usually with linear equations, which is what we're going to be starting off with um, working with today. We're going to look at slope-intercept form or y equals mx plus b form. And then the last step is to change the y back to function notation and write it as f inverse of x. Those are our four easy steps. So the first two steps, uh, we should be good to go. So let's do those real quick. We're going to change f of x to y. So y equals negative 2x plus 5. And then the second step is just to flip or switch the x's and the y's. So my y becomes x, negative 2. My x becomes y, plus 5. My third step is to solve for y. So there's nothing different. We're just solving for y now instead of solving for x. So we're going to, um, the first step when we get y by itself, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. So x minus 5 equals negative 2y. And then to get this y by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So x, or I'm sorry, negative 2. x minus 5 over negative 2 equals y. And then the last step is just to change back to function notation and rewrite it as f inverse of x equals x minus 5 over negative 2. So four steps, uh, not too bad, hopefully, especially the first two. So again, we go through our steps. First step is to change f of x to y. So y equals... 5x squared minus 3. The second step is going to be to change the x's and the y's. We're going to flip them. 
So this becomes x equals 5y squared minus 3. Next step is to solve for y. So I'm going to get y by itself. The first thing I have to do is move the 3. So I add 3 to both sides. Next, I have to get, still have to get this y by itself. So I want to divide both sides by 5. And then lastly, I want to take the square root of both sides. So I get plus or minus the square root of x plus 3 over 5 equals y. And then the last step is to change it back into function notation and rewrite it as f inverse of x equals plus or minus x plus 3 over 5. So those are our inverses. Now we're going to look at inverses um, and their original functions graphically. So what I want you to do is pull out some graph paper. You're going to have to pause the video. And I want you to graph both of these functions. So you're going to graph f of x equals 2x minus 3 and f of x equals x squared minus 7. Once you have those graphed, you're going to figure out the inverse of each function and then graph each function's inverse on the same graph paper. I want you to make uh, two separate graphs. So don't graph these. Don't graph the red and the purple on the same graph. Put them on two separate graphs, and then put the functions and their inverses on the same graph, so you can see the uh, relationship between the two. And after you have graphed those, I want you to again pause the video and answer these three questions. So go ahead and do that now, and then once you're finished, come back to the video, and we'll continue. All right, so hopefully you've graphed those functions and you've seen the relationship between the two. If you graph them correctly, uh, hopefully you'll figure out that there's a special relationship between them. And uh, it does make sense um, why that would happen because of what we do in one of the steps where we flip the x's and the y's. So let's talk about the definition of inverse functions. So here we have two functions, f and g. And all I'm doing with f is I'm calling that a function, I'm calling g a function. Again, we talked about this in the last video. I could call it h of x, I could call it q of x. These are just our names for the functions. These two functions, f and g, are inverses of each other if and only if these two things occur. So I'm doing function composition. I'm taking g of x and I'm plugging it into f of x. And I should get x out. And the other way is I'm taking f of x and I'm plugging it into g of x and I should also get x out. So either way, I'm taking one function and plugging it into the other and I should get x if they are inverses of each other. So function composition is one of those things that you just kind of kind of practice with. Um, it's not really a natural operation, um, but we'll get through it, I promise. So just to show you uh, that this isn't as difficult as it looks if they are inverses, uh, let's verify that these two functions are indeed inverses. So here we have f of x equals 3x minus 3 and f inverse of x equals x plus 3 over 3. We are going to verify or prove that these are inverses. And the way we do that is by function composition. So I'm going to take f of x and plug it into f inverse of x or vice versa. It doesn't matter which one you do. Um, I'm going to do f inverse of f of x. So I'm going to take the red one and plug it into the green one. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so here I have my original. So let's look at that in red. So I have 3x minus 3. I'm plugging that in for x. And here's what's left over, plus 3 over 3. So this was the x from my original equation right here. Okay, so now I just have to evaluate. So 3x minus 3 plus 3. Well, 3x stays minus 3 plus 3. That cancels to 0, so that's gone. These cancel. I'm left with 3x over 3. 
and I can divide both the top and the bottom by 3 and just get x. So it is true that these are inverses. And if they are inverses, it will work out that easy every time. You'll be able to see stuff cancel and, and you'll quickly get to x. Stuff will undo, undo itself. So let's look at a couple more examples of verifying inverses. These look more difficult, but again, if they are inverses, the operations will undo themselves really quick and you'll end up with x. So here we're going to verify that f of x equals one third x squared and f inverse of x equals three x to the one half power are in fact inverses. So I'm going to do this both ways to show you that it works. But if I take this whole value here of one third x squared and I take it and I'm going to plug it in for that x right there. This is one composition. So this is going to be f inverse of f of x. This is our first one. So this is going to be 3. I'm going to use a bracket because I don't have double parentheses. So 3, and I'm going to plug in my x now. So this is going to be 1 third x squared. And all of that is raised to the 1 half power. So this is going to equal, well, the 3 and the 1 third cancel. So I'm left with x squared to the 1 half power, which is basically saying the square root of x squared. Or if I multiply these exponents, I get x to the first. So either way, I get x. So let's do it the other way, just to show you that it works both ways. So this time, I'm going to take this entire function here and plug it in for this x. So this time I'm doing f of f inverse of x. Function composition. So I get one third. This is where my um, f prime of it, where I plug in my f inverse of x. So I have 3x, make this a bracket, to the 1 half power. And all of that is squared. Well, according to my order of operations and my rules of x, my properties of exponents and my rules of exponents, the first thing I do is I multiply these exponents because it's a power to a power. So this will equal 1 third of 3x. 1 half times 2 is 1, so this is just 3x to the first power. Well, now our 1 third and our 3 cancel, so I'm just left with x. So either way, you can see that it is true that f of x and f inverse of x are inverses. It is true. We proved it. All right, so if you have any questions about inverses, um, you can try a couple examples from the book. Um, you can overlook that, and then we'll uh, talk about it in class.